Hi everybody and welcome back to the Super Duty Build. Now I did take a couple days off because uh, I just didn't feel like filming and I wanted to just enjoy what I was doing in the hangar, but I did get my panel back from Aircraft Specialty. So let's take a look at that first. Well, I happen to have received a package from Aircraft Specialty today. I'll bet you can guess what's in here. Let's get this opened up. I can't wait to see it. Wow, look at this. It looks absolutely amazing. This is just really cool. It's the first panel I've ever had that I've actually had silk screen. Normally I just print out labels on a label maker and stick it on there. So this is uh, definitely my most professional panel. I love the color too of the, the text. I didn't want to go with black because it would be hard to see. I figured white would be too bright and this is kind of a, a lighter gray. It just looks uh, absolutely perfect on here. So one of the tricky things about sending this back to them was when I when they sent me the panel, it was obviously just a flat panel. You could just put it in a box or whatever, or this kind of envelope box and send it. But what I had to do is I had to put these, these angles on the back here to mount the GPS. So I couldn't just put it flat back in here. So I made this wooden frame and then I just screwed it on there with a screw and some nylon washers. Um, and then they sent it back to me, of course, in the same, the same frame. So it's very well protected, uh, no damage to it all and it looks amazing. I, let's just take it out of here and look at it. Yeah, again, I'm really impressed here. So aircraft specialty, you know, they laser cut the panel. Um, I did paint it, but they, they do offer powder coating. Like if you guys just wanted to have it powder coated, uh, you can send a blank panel back to them and they'll powder coat it and, and label it. But I just, I decided to paint mine because I wanted it green to match the inside. But uh, what a great job they did. This really looks nice and sharp. So the next thing I'm going to do, before I mount this in the airplane, there are a few, a couple things I need to do on there yet before I take that all apart uh, to put this on. But one of the things I wanna do is for like the ELT indicator here, I need to, uh, what I'm gonna do is, there's little pilot holes drilled here and I'm gonna uh, tap those so that the screws I use in here can just thread into the panel. And that way, when I take this out every year or two, whenever I have to change the battery in here, I don't have to get behind the panel. I can just uh, unscrew the four screws, pull this out, change the battery, and put it back in. So everything else here, I'll wait until it's in the airplane before I start adding the avionics. Well, I've been doing a little bit of work to the panel. Look how nice this is looking. So some of these components, like the two screens and the GPS, they're, they're just sitting in here just for looks. These two are screwed in. This one is not screwed in yet, the radio, because Dynon provides these nice black screws to screw these in. And somebody around here seems to have lost the screws for that one. So I had to order more screws. The switches are not, uh, or the nuts on the switches aren't tight and I don't even have the nuts on some of these, but I just was kind of playing around and seeing how things look. All this, like all these little components are screwed in. I think I mentioned on here, I, I tapped the, uh, the panel itself. So the, these screws thread into the panel. Uh, so when I need to take this out to replace the battery, I don't have to get behind the panel. I'll just unscrew the screws. I got a lot of fingerprints on here I need to clean off, uh, but yeah. That's looking really good. I can't wait to see how it looks in the airplane. Now I've been working on getting the fuselage ready to install this panel, which is nice because this will be the final installation of the panel. It should never have to come back out again. But yesterday, I spent most of the day uh, working on a top secret project for Zenith Aircraft. Um, I might be a little dramatic, but you'll know what that is tomorrow, I think, or the next day as soon as I get that finished up. But I think you guys are really, really gonna like it. Um, Today, I'm going to work on, you'll see in a second here, I had to rip apart everything uh, up below the, the glare shield or behind the panel because I need to attach the center console to the steel frame. Now here's the center console in the fuselage and I have the left side and the right side installed, but you'll notice how, you know, this can wiggle because it's not attached up here. Now, 
in the plans, Zenith has just a little bracket or L angle like this that gets riveted back here. It gets riveted to the, the center console and then it gets riveted to the bottom of this steel tube. I didn't want to do that because uh, it interferes with what I have going on up here. Now I could cut this part out right here, but I still have to attach this angle to here and I don't want rivets in the front. So I'll show you a little bit different way that I did it. All right, now this is the bracket that I made. And what'll happen here is this will rivet to the back of that tube. And then these go down on the sides. You can see I have nut plates on there and this gets attached to the side. And uh, this keeps the front of that center console free of any rivets or attachments. So let me show you how this works in the airplane. I have this angle here. You can see it's clico to the tube. This will get riveted with two A4 rivets. And then you can see how, uh, you know, these little tabs come down. There's a nut plate here with a hole in here. And I haven't drilled the holes in here yet, but there would just be a little screw right here. And the reason there's a nut plate on there is I could use a nut, but it just makes it easier. If I have to remove one of these side panels for maintenance, you know, obviously I take out these screws, these screws, and I just take out this screw here and this will come off. I don't have to worry about getting back here to a nut. So uh, that's my little bracket. And obviously, as you can see, there's nothing on the front here. So when I put my Dynon D3, I think that's called, or 30 or D3 in there, uh, there'd be no other rivets and nothing to interfere with that. Oh, and one other thing, you can see my avionics tray there. <laughs> I had to take everything, I had to take that out just because, and I knew I, I had to do this for a while and I've been kind of putting it off, but just to be able to get my drill in here and drill the holes in this steel tube, I needed the room in here, so that had to come out. Um, but I need to do that. I did it today because I need to get that done before I get the panel mounted in here and the avionics rack and everything else, or otherwise I wouldn't be able to get back here to drill the holes. So that's what I worked on today. Got that done. Now I'm ready to reinstall the avionics rack. Once I do that, I can put the panel in the plane. Now to put my Dynon D3 in this hole, you can see this is just a standard three inch instrument hole uh, and it's got the four, or maybe it's three and a half, whatever it is, but it's a standard instrument hole for pretty much any airplane. Uh, it's got the four mounting screw holes in there. And with the Dynon D3, we have this mount right here that it mounts in. And a lot of you guys were asking me how that it actually mounts in this hole. And they designed it so that if you have any instrument in your airplane, like even if you had like an old Cherokee or something like that, you can take that instrument out and it's, this D3 is designed to fit in that standard hole. And you can see on the back of this mounting bracket, it's got those little wings that retract and I'm just squeezing that from the front side. And then it, it uh, kind of locks in position with these little pins. These go in those four screw holes. So you just squeeze this together, put it in a hole and let it go. And it locks in there. I'll show you what I mean. Well, that's pretty cool, huh? Super easy to do. Now I've got just kind of a backup EFIS screen here. This has airspeed and altitude and, and all kinds of stuff on it. And I have my intercom below that. I know somebody did ask in one of my videos what these two holes are for. 
And these two holes were originally for the master switch and the fuel pump, or the master switch and the avionics master. And you can see up here, I have the master switch up here, and this is one of these locking two position switches. This switch was $72, but I wanted this switch to be able to do that. And I have my fuel pump here, so I moved everything up here. I'm not using an avionics master, so I have two open holes, but if I do go with the PMAGs, with the electronic ignition, I know there's a couple switches and circuit breakers that go with that, so I can put those switches here. If not, if I don't need these for anything else, then I will just uh, plug the holes with a nice uh, hole plug that they make for these, or you know, put a plate over it or something. Uh, not a big deal. All right, well, I'm pretty happy with this panel. Man, does that look good, if I do say so myself. I'm liking the Army color. Uh, pretty nice. Now, before I put these screens in here, I do want to put my screws in here. So just to make it a little bit easier to get back here. And I was going to mention one of the things that worried me the most about painting this airplane in army green was finding the right green. And because what I was afraid of was if I pick the wrong shade of green forever, I'm going to look at the airplane and just think, oh, I don't like that green. So I did, when I was getting the paint mixed, I did go through a couple different uh, colors until I settled on this one. And this one is the exact same color as this army Jeep right here. So I actually really, really love this green color. To me, it's the perfect shade. There are other shades that look good, like uh, Joe with the building the cricket, Joe Millet, I think is his name. Um, Joe's RC Corner on YouTube. He has a different shade of green, but I really, really like his too. His looks great too. So there's, there's different ones that look good, but I just, I'm really happy with this color. I really like it. All right, guys, that's enough for me for one day. Uh, it doesn't look like I got a lot done, but I also worked a lot on the autopilot too. That'll be in future videos. Um, but I've got some other things I need to get done this evening. I do hope you enjoyed taking a look at my panel. Uh, hopefully you can understand my excitement because uh, when you're building an airplane, it's really fun to see things come together. And now that my panel is painted uh, and it's labeled and instruments are starting to go in and it's in the airplane, it's just really exciting. This was all done, as you guys probably know, by Aircraft Specialty. I've been working with Steve for quite a while because we've been designing and making all the fuel lines, the brake lines. Once I do get my engine, we'll make all the oil and fuel lines ahead of the firewall and on all that stuff will be available to you guys. They did everything on my panel except paint it. Uh, they cut it out, they designed everything in their, their CAD program or whatever. Um, and then of course they silk screened it and labeled it. If you guys wanna get a professional panel made, uh, just go ahead and give Steve a call or an email or whatever at Aircraft Specialty. I'll put their info on the screen or down in the description box. Um, also, I got a call today from Abby from Flightline Interiors. And uh, I think by the end of January, I will have my seats in here. So I'm really looking forward to that, especially with the panel in here. I'll be able to sit in the airplane and make airplane noises. So that's going to be exciting. I can't wait to get the seats in here. Uh, you guys probably know Flightline Interiors did the seats for my cruiser and, um, you know, they're awesome. So the, these seats will be pretty cool too. So that's it for now. Make sure you subscribe if you want to follow along on the progress. I always appreciate it if you guys want to give the video a thumbs up. Um, if not, I don't really care, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so anyway, we'll see you again on the next video.